Hey guys, this is CJ. And this is Nick. And today we actually have a really kind of special video for you. We're going to be breaking down some potential Suicide Squad plot details. Uh, now these popped up on 4chan uh, yesterday after all of the set reports, but really they had popped up, you know, a couple of months ago, really. I remember that's when I first saw them. Um, and they kind of, nobody really paid attention to them. You know, it kind of seemed like... You know, eh, you know, whatever, the movie's so far off, you know, these plot leaks, you know, it would be, you know, I guess kind of cool if it turns out to be true, but after the set reports, this sounds like it could be legit. A lot of this sounds right in line with the set reports, so it was dug back up and discussed a little more, to, uh, you know, yesterday, and now we're going to go through and kind of break it down for you and discuss. Uh, this is going to be a little, a little bit of a two-parter, because uh, the first part of these leaks is explaining these characters and how they come to be, you know, where they are in the movie. And then the second one is kind of the the main, you know, story of the film. So, Nick, any first thoughts uh, on the set reports and stuff, you know, about the movie before we dive right into the plot? Um, yeah, like you were saying, a lot of the stuff actually does line up with what we know about the movie. And plus, like, uh, the movie's only out in, like, three weeks or something. So, I mean... Hopefully, yeah. like all the, hopefully some of this is true, so we don't get like a bunch of hate. True, but hopefully we'll I, see what like happens. It seems it seems plausible to me. So it absolutely does. Rereading this last night and then rereading it again now, like there are so many things that just fall right in line with the set reports. It's almost you know too good to be true. You know, to borrow the James Gordon line, you know, no, you can't believe in coincidences. Uh, there's you know so. We'll see. Yeah, and I'll, you know some of these things. Even now, like I just look at a paragraph and see something random out of the corner of my eye, and it is exactly something that was in the set report. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, Suicide Squad is going to open introducing all of these characters, uh, detailing what they've done to get thrown in jail, and uh, while they're being transferred to Bell Reve Penitentiary, which is. A, as they said in the set report, a secret government prison for superpowered beings that the government still doesn't really fully understand. Another sequence is apparently set to catchy pop music, and each time a character is introduced, their name and their various crimes pop up on the screen in bright neon colors. Now, so we start off the movie, or we start off this segment with uh, Deadshot, who of course, as David Ayer said, is kind of the leader of the team, unofficially, and uh, it really is Will Smith's movie, to use his words. Now, in the movie, Deadshot is an ex-military contract killer who once tried to kill Batman, only for his daughter to place herself between him and Batman, and kind of defending him, which led to Deadshot being arrested, and he now harbors this big, intense hatred for Batman himself. Uh, Killer Croc is a cannibal who actually lives down in the sewers of Gotham City and works as kind of muscle that you can buy. Uh, if you're a criminal, you can buy, I guess, Killer Croc to protect you or eat people. I don't know. Uh, and he was arrested by Batman as well, thrown in jail. El Diablo uh, is actually, interestingly enough, a former gangster from Los Angeles, which was, you know, of course, the site of David Ayer's two previous well-known crime movies, End of Watch and Training Day. Uh, and he actually, he's got these, you know, firepowers, as we see, and he actually is repented and is a pacifist now after he accidentally set his wife and child on fire. Captain Boomerang, and this is the most interesting one to me out of these, int like, introductions, Captain Boomerang is a mercenary who actually got busted by the Flash during a botched assassination, and that's why he is where he is. Slipknot is another mercenary who was caught by Batman. And Katana is actually not a criminal. Her late husband was, though. He was a, a contract killer and assassin. And uh, now she actually is working with the government to atone for his crimes. And that actually falls right in line with what we've heard about her being Rick Flagg's kind of right-hand woman. Uh, Enchantress, and this is really interesting. There's some key things here that line up with the set reports. She's an archaeologist who works for the government who is searching for evidence of ancient aliens. Uh, a little mind-boggling <laughs> to me. Kind of the jump-the-shark moment there. Uh, and when she finds a voodoo doll and touches it, she gets possessed uh, by this witch. Uh, as you know, in the words of Rick Flagg from the trailers, and this all kind of, of course, culminates with Harley Quinn and the Joker. Uh, now, Harley Quinn was Harleen Quinzel, a psychologist who, after treating him, you know, of course, fell in love, and then he tortured her, uh, and she ultimately became his girlfriend. And the Joker is, in as in the words of this poster, actually likes Harley, even though he treats her like shit. Uh, Batman busted a deal between the Joker and Comments character Monster T. Uh, and the Joker managed to escape, but only because he ditched Harley. And then ha Batman brings both Harley and Monster T in, 
and that's why they end up where they are in the movie. Now, the Joker himself, some really interesting details here. The Joker is a gangster and owns a nightclub where Harley's an exotic dancer. A little, little offbeat. And this is actually one of the other big things from the plot details that line up with these set reports. Because in that set report, Collider mentioned that we do see one of Joker's clubs with go-go dancers wearing Batman masks. Uh, which is actually kind of a cool little detail in my opinion. Um, and then, you know, there are some details about a scene where Joker, and you know, has his men in this private, uh, Monster T's men in this private room. And kind of notices one of his Monster T's guys eyeing Harley. And so he kind of, you know convinces the guy to accept a lap dance and then kills the guy for disrespecting his girl. So I guess one of those scenes that's really going to show off that Joker is actually a dangerous, violent psychopath, even though he's kind of at the top of this criminal empire. So Nick, a lot of information to process there, um, but some really kind of cool details, in my opinion, about these characters that are going to be in the movie. Uh, what's your first brush thoughts, and if there's... Give me one character whose introduction you like and one who you don't like. Uh, like... Just the first thoughts that I felt from reading this, it felt like a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy kind of vibe. Oh, yeah. Because they have the whole, like, them getting put in prison, all this pop music and everything. I mean, they're trying to be fun with this movie, that it makes sense. Um, I Like, it kind of is cool, though, that they have, like, <coughs> this little sequence of them all getting put in prison. Yeah. Because, it, like, it establishes their characters and, like lets the audience know where they came from and stuff without just kind of throwing them in the movie. Yeah, and I, but, I do actually love the, the like, listing off their rap sheets you yeah, know, set yeah. to pop music. That seems like it's going to be a fun sequence. <laughs> I kind the of only fun the... scene in the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It's going to be a fun afternoon in the movies. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Who's, who, if you had to pick one, whose introduction do you like the best? Uh, I think the, the best one will maybe be either the Deadshot one or... I guess the Harley Quinn one, because it just seems like they're going to put the most time into those ones. Like, it's oh, going to yeah. be a bigger scene. They definitely are. Will Smith and, and Margot Robbie probably two of the biggest people in this movie. Uh, and it, <clears throat> just judging from what we've seen from the trailers, it certainly seems like they're a major, major focus. And I'm yeah. actually looking to see Will Smith bring a lot of his uh, Oscar caliber stuff to <laughs> this movie, hopefully. But uh, So uh, if you had to pick one which you don't like, what would you say? Uh... Well, I guess Slipknot because there's like nothing on him. He's just some, he's just some mercenary exactly. that gets caught. Like I don't care. There's nothing. I mean, I gotta say that's probably my least favorite as well. I, I do <laughs> love the uh, the Captain Boomerang, like that he actually got busted by the Flash, who at this point is still a very low level vigilante. Uh, it's kind of a cool touch, and we'll see if that actually holds up in the movie. But that's maybe the one part that I find a little unbelievable. Uh, even though he is a Flash villain, and so it's kind of a nice nod, and it could be an Easter egg in the film. I don't know, it just seems like, you know, we've only seen him as uh, a kid stopping a robbery at a convenience store. Uh, yeah. But if I had to pick the one that I like, you know, the most, other than Captain Boomerang, I'd say probably. I agree with you, Harley seems cool, the Deadshot one seems cool, but uh, the Enchantress one is going to be interesting to watch. Um, and especially, you know, we're going to talk about that a little more in the story details portion here. Um, you ready to dive into this second part, Nick? Or yeah, let's do it. Gotta... Let's do it. All right. Uh, Amanda Waller. Manages to get everyone in Bell Reeve, and then goes to the government and asks, you know, hey, I've got this ex team of expendable people, let's use them. And the government says, no, it's, you know, they're wild cards, of course, uh, it doesn't make a lot of, you know, sense, you've got some operational vulnerabilities there. Then Enchantress actually manages to escape, uh, June Moon can't fight off the possession, I guess, and Enchantress slowly starts to take more and more control. And she attacks Midway City, which we know from the set details, strangely, <laughs> strangely located in the middle on that island where they fought, uh, you know, uh, Doomsday, I guess. Uh, and she actually opens a portal to hell and turns Monster T into her brother, the Incubus. I guess he takes over Monster T's body um, and turns Waller's men sent after her into uh, sent after her into monsters. And now there's no other option. So the government says, fine, use uh, use the, some kind of suicide squad. Uh, the Patsies, uh, and actually the really interesting note here that the plot details say, and which completely lines up with the set reports, is that Enchantress's ex-boyfriend Rick Flagg gets assigned to kind of lead the team, or shepherd the team, I guess you could say. Um, let's actually, let's take a moment. That's, that's a little bit of a weird pull. Do Rick Flagg and June Moon have that relationship in the comics? Because I can't remember for the life of me. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Like, I'm not really familiar, though. It just like, I have the of... comics, but I just 
I don't know. Yeah, it just seems kind of like a weird pull to me to have, you know, it's like, oh, and Rick Flagg used to date June Moon. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I... I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm sure we'll see it on screen. Somebody pointed out that we've actually seen that in a trailer, I guess. There was one quick shot where you see Cara Delevingne and Joel Kinnaman. So it seems like we'll get a flashback of that, maybe. But then yeah. the Joker finds out where Harley ended up. And uh, actually, he's the one that shoots down the chopper, like we see in the trailer. Uh, but his crashes, and it's presumed that the Joker actually is dead. Uh, but then Slipknot, of course, as many of us have predicted, Slipknot's going to be the evidence that if you try to ditch the team, you're going to get your head blown up because Waller has uh, attached them with bomb collars, more or less. Uh, and so as they make their way through the city, uh, they're trying to reach the Enchantress's nest. They fight a bunch of her little monsters, as we've kind of seen in the trailers as well. Um, but actually, the Enchantress kidnaps Waller and uh, to get her heart back, which is interesting i don't know, you know what, what that <laughs> what means is that? It's very what? vague uh but she needs her heart to go back to max power and this actually gives the, the suicide squad a chance to escape but they decide to see the mission through feeling i guess some sort of responsibility um yeah. and that kind of lines up with the synopsis they just put out in the last couple of days where they say you know will they choose or actually the the sdcc detail synopsis which you know kind of hints at that being the central conflict will they decide to you know band together as a team and see it through or every man for themselves uh so that's another kind of little interesting connection um harley actually though destroys the heart in the end curing the enchantress's host of i guess the demonic possession uh and diablo uh, diablo 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 like aquaman diablo sacrifices himself (laughs) to kill the incubus and close the portal which kind of ends the threat and i guess is diablo's ultimate atonement for uh, his 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 crime, and the mission is actually a success, of course, since they stopped the world from being overrun. Uh, and the government says, "Hey, you did a good job. We're gonna keep going back to you. We're gonna keep using the squad, uh, and everyone is locked back up for uh, you know continued missions under Rick Flagg's command." Uh, and then Batman, at the kind of end of the movie, uh, Batman helps Deadshot see his daughter, and Deadshot kind of is like, "Hey, Batman, you're not you're not that bad a guy. You know, you're you're a pretty cool, dude." And, yeah, they're uh, gonna the team end, up in the Batman solo movie. <laughs> they will, they will. Uh, Joker actually, who is presumed dead, remember all this time, turns up, and it, you know, you see that he's disguised as a guard in Belle Reve, which could be a really, really interesting Joker note if they do that uh, bit from the comics where he is using like muscle relaxers to relax the smile and like you know paint it over the white skin and stuff like that uh but then he rescues harley from the jail and they drive off into the sunset and as you can tell probably from that story uh the poster ends off his uh potential leak (laughs) by acknowledging the fact that boomerang killer croc and katana are all pretty much uh wasted uh not like i don't know i don't know if they're wasted like they're drunk or they're I was gonna, that, originally when he wrote that I was thinking I was like at the end it's like everybody's you know partying and I was like oh no he probably just means that they weren't used well enough in the movie um, so Nick what do you think of this story like if it's if it's true where do you think you would grade this as a movie uh, I mean it sounds okay I'd, I'd probably give it like a, a seven just as a plot here but I have mm. to see it in motion and like they're Obviously, going to be other scenes and stuff. It seemed like the Joker just disappeared for the whole movie and then came, <laughs> which is kind of interesting and... because they did talk about. I guess David Ayer was talking about yesterday that the Joker was not always in the movie. Ben Affleck's Batman was always going to be in the movie, but Joker was not always in the movie, and he kind of faded in and out in the scripts because they wanted to make sure they had a good actor for it, and so they got Leto, and finally <laughs> that was what you know pushed it over the edge. But um, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of fine with that. I really don't want Joker to be the focus, even though he's the focus of their entire marketing campaign. But I, I'm going to agree with you. I think it it sounds pretty good as a plot. It sounds like a movie that I'd like to see. I like that even in this little leak, there are some little references and Easter eggs that get set up. Uh, but so much of it comes down to the performances. Like, if the performances don't work, then the movie's not going to work, of course. Yeah. Uh, but any final thoughts? Real quick. Uh, final thoughts? Go see Suicide Squad. Support and, the original yeah. release. <laughs> <laughs> But no, yeah, don't no. actually make sure DC films fail. Yeah. Oh, I'd say go see it. It sounds good <laughs> enough for me to go see it. Uh, but so that about wraps it up for this video. Comment with, comment down in that comment section below and let us know what you <laughs> thought of this plot leak. Uh, do you buy it? Do you not? Uh, signing off. Uh, this is CJ and for Nick. We'll see you next time. <laughs>